So I know that I've talked about housing for the turtles, I've talked about filtration, lighting, and a whole bunch of other basic things that you need to know, but I forgot one that's probably the most important. What do you even feed turtles? Let's find out. Hey turtle nerds, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be tackling the topic of what it is that you should be feeding your turtles. So there's three main different types of food categories that you're going to want to give to your turtles. The first one is going to be their staple diet or basically what they eat every day. It's usually a pelleted form of food that has most of the vitamins and nutrients that your turtle is going to need, but not all of them. So one type that I really personally love and use is the Missouri Aquatic Turtle Diet because it's specifically formulated for aquatic turtles and it uses a lot of protein and high quality ingredients when compared to something that I feed less often, such as these Reptomin food sticks. They're still good, but it doesn't have as high quality ingredients as the Missouri. As you can see, the first ingredient is potato starch or potato protein. So the Missouri's first ingredient, I believe, is something like fish protein or something like that. As far as how much and how often to feed, you only feed your turtles as much pelleted food as they can eat in five minutes. Usually as you have your turtle for longer, you're going to be able to tell pretty much how much they eat, just kind of guesstimated in handfuls. Now, as far as how often, if your turtle is less than one year of age, you're going to want to feed them every day. And if they're over a year in age, you can feed them pretty much every other day. Now, for hatchlings, you are still going to want to feed them a pelleted diet as their staple, but you're going to want to give them something a bit higher in protein because they really need that in order to grow nice and strong and big. So I feed them this Zoomed Aquatic Turtle, uh, the hatchling formula, and I really like this because it is 43% protein and it comes in these really small granules that are perfect for, for teeny tiny, you know, quarter sized turtles. They can easily digest them and really put a lot of these down and get a lot of protein in them. So that's pretty much it as far as their staple diet. But what a lot of people don't know is that turtles need to eat plant matter. They like kind of the vegetables, the leafy greens sometimes, and they actually really do need that in their diet. So usually for turtles less than a year old, it can comprise maybe 25% of their diet. But for turtles over a year in age, it's going to pretty much comprise of maybe 40 to 50% of their diet. Now, I personally have Diamondback Terrapins, which need a much higher protein diet and less of the leafy greens, but Red Ear Sliders, Map Turtles, Musk Turtles, they really do need those greens in order to be properly healthy. Now, there are a couple different greens that you can feed. You can do green or red leaf lettuce. Um, I know that turnip greens are also good, kind of dandelion greens. And you can also feed sparingly kale, romaine lettuce, and spinach. Now what you're not going to want to feed is iceberg lettuce because iceberg lettuce actually is not really nutritious for your turtles at all. The final thing that you're going to want to feed to your turtles are the fun things, the treats. These are what they beg you every day for and what they really, really enjoy. When you feed your turtle treats, you're going to want to really, really vary this part of their diet. Variety is pretty much key to a turtle's diet. With pellets, you don't have to vary that much, but with things like the greens and the treats that you give them, you're really going to want to make sure that you diversify. Treats are where you're going to really want to get nice and specific as far as what species your turtle is. So something like a red ear slider is going to eat a huge variety of different foods, but it's going to be much different from something like a diamondback terrapin. So red ear sliders, map turtles, musk turtles, you're going to want to feed them things such as snails, feeder fish, and by feeder fish I mean only live bearing fish, not really goldfish because they're not good feeders. You're going to want to give them crickets, you're going to want to give them mealworms, bloodworms, even like those big fat night crawlers that you get at a bait shop or something. These are all different kinds of treats that you are going to want to give to your turtle. Now for my turtles, these are diamondback terrapins, so their treats are going to be a lot different from something like a red ear slider. Now I can still feed them all of the treats that I mentioned before, but I need to vary a little bit further as far as where they come from. Now diamondback terrapins are a brackish water species. 
this means that they live in the kind of tidal marshes and they're going to find some different organisms than something like a red ear slider in a drainage pond. So diamondback terrapins can find things such as shrimp, fiddler crabs, they can find oysters and clams, and these are really, really important to be in their diet because they need a very high protein content, they need a lot of calcium, which comes from the exoskeleton and those hard things on different feeder animals, such as snails, crabs have their hard exoskeleton, that's a really good calcium source. So basically diamondback terrapins need a little bit of a furthered variety. I am lucky enough to live on the coast, so I can just go down to the bait shop and get them some live shrimp, maybe four or five inches long, for less than a quarter of shrimp and feed that to them as a treat. Now, I give them treats usually anywhere from once a week to twice a week to, if you're really strapped, um, you can give it to them maybe once every three weeks or a month. So one quick little side note is also where your turtle's gonna get calcium. Calcium is very important for them to build a nice and strong shell. So usually you can get some type of calcium powder and dust it on their treat food, such as worms, mealworms, or crickets. You kind of dust it on and then they will eat that and get their calcium. Or you can give them naturally occurring calcium in organisms such as snails or with my diamondback terrapins, they eat fiddler crabs and shrimp. And it's really important for them to get all of that calcium. Now, my diamondback terrapins also have, as I've discussed before, a crush plate and a very strong beak. And those two things need to be worn down and kind of grinded to a reasonable level. Otherwise, they get overgrown and they can have a lot of jaw issues. So I feed them some very hard and rough looking organisms such as crabs. I will feed them whole live fiddler crabs and they eat them and grind them down and use their crush plate. Also, the exoskeleton of a crab is really good for their digestive tract because even if they can't fully digest the pieces of shell from a crab, it's still very good for their internal organs and their intestines to keep them kind of moving and, and make sure that everything's flowing properly. So another really good source of calcium is taking a piece of cuddle bone. You know, you can use the kinds that are even made for birds and toss it in your enclosure and the turtles can tell when they need that calcium and they'll go ahead and eat it. So that is probably going to do it for this video. I have tried to make this video seven times now. All different things have been happening, loud cicadas, people mowing their lawns. I bought a microphone and it just didn't work. So now hopefully I can finally get this video out. Thank you so much for watching. The kitties would like to say thank you as well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you learned something, let me know in the comments. Any questions you can post down there. Follow me in my various social media platforms in the description. And I will leave you with the turtles eating things.